We are here in one of the most iconic places in the entire world, Pier 39 in San Francisco. Welcome to Concrete Talent, I'm Rafael. And we're here in this wonderful city to see what street performance it has to offer. Check it out. So Silver Guardian, how long have you been out doing this? Eh, I would say off and on 20 years. 20 years? How has street performing changed in 20 years? Or has it at all? Oh my god, it sucks now. It's like people have less appreciation and um, getting tipped these days is like pulling teeth. So, yeah. what, do, what do you think changed? Was it the, the, the audience? Was it the city? What, what was it? Um, well, the economy pretty much changed and I guess due to the economy, the um, new generation of people, they don't have as much appreciation for performers like they used to. So, I mean, um, I think they're pretty much died off with the older generation. Are you um, somebody who just does this primarily for a living or is there a day job that you have? No, I'm, I'm actually a contractor. I'm a web content coordinator for a local college in San Mateo. So this is like a secondary job. Say. Very interesting. The Sylvia Guardian is not just this contraption over here that you built, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but there's also a voice that goes along with it. There's kind of sound effects that go along with it. So it's a whole show. Silver Guardian, you have a lot of people waiting to see you do your thing. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. <laughs> All right. He is. he is what you call a contortionist. Truly. I am what you call a lucky man. <laughs> you know, if you could do that, you'd be clapping. It means it. Yeah. She's actually the most talented one out of all of us. Literally. When she comes down from that, you guys make some real noise for her. That took her many, many years. <laughs> Say what you like. If you want to stay or want us to go, sign the petition, y'all. We really appreciate it. Urban Funk Machine is in the house. to you because you're on uh, drums but you don't have your drum set here today no. right you're, you're on you're on the buckets Bucket. why the buckets and pants today well because uh, they're trying to ban me for performing on the street so I'm not gonna let them take my drums they took drum set once before I said no more if they want to take something I take these buckets can I always get replaced with buckets but the drum set no forget that <laughs> so me and Ellen hooked up and now we got this thing going and we've been selling CDs like hotcakes so you've been out here for 20 years doing street performing what about studio stuff? What about with bands? Okay, well, I just got to do in a studio with um, Michael Walden. He produced my album called San Francisco's Got the Groove On. It'll be coming out very soon. Does that surprise a lot of people that you guys have producers, but yet you're street performers? Uh, yeah, I, I think it does. I think there's this um, sometimes negative uh, reinforcement of who street artists are. And we're aware of that. We just take it with a grain of salt and we just, we just keep going. Right on. Well, you know what? I'm sure that the, the crowd behind uh, the cameras right over there are waiting to get some more Urban Funk Machine. And so we're going to let them get some. You guys have been awesome to join us here on Concrete Talent. We appreciate it. We have Larry and Edward. You guys do your magic. Urban Concrete. Funk Machine. As an outsider myself, not being a street performer, it seems to me that other people coming by your act, wherever you're performing, and wanting to be part of the act or get attention would be the toughest thing that you could face being a performer here on the street. And as you can see with our James Brown over here, that's what's going on. And I'm pretty sure with our dueling James Brown situation behind me that the guy who showed up, who's not really the street performer, had no idea that he would turn into a street performer when he woke up this morning. So you can see this is what happens. And this is how tough it is. You know, it's not always glamorous to be a street performer. You know, it's so interesting that Elmo looks so much bigger in person. You don't think that hey, Elmo's that big. From? What show? 
uh, we're doing a show called Concrete Talent. What is that on TV? Uh, well, it's a pilot right now. This is a pilot episode. So what's going on? Nothing much. I do character modeling. I've been doing it for a year. I make more money doing it than anywhere else. You, you make more money doing yeah, this? the general public. You know, a lot of the street performers here, they get paid by the businesses around here. Oh, they do? because I'm, tar- I'm one that really is supported, though, by the customers that come here. Yeah, this many is- of the street performers here, many not all, but many of the musicians and many of the mimes, they get paid to be here by the City of San Francisco Art Commission or various business here to block real people from making money here. It's a very lucrative place. It's too bad the property owners uh, are not transparent about harassing people. So, so have you worked in New York and Vegas? Yeah, I've done this in Vegas, and I've done this in New York, and I've done it in L.A. and in Hawaii too. And I like it the best here because there's not as much competition here, and it's the weather is really nice. Hi. A little behind the scenes here, I gotta tell you, it's so surreal to have a serious conversation with someone wearing an Elmo suit. It was very odd, just to let you know. That's against the law. That's against the rules. Oh, that's. <laughs> hey. Put the helmet back on. Put the head back on. I'm just saying, put the head back on. I know I'm no. Brad Pitt, but you got to keep the head on, money. It's not good. <laughs> he just went from Elmo to Oscar the Grouch. Again, I'm not good looking. I'm just saying. <laughs> now, I've been a costume character before, right? And I know there are rules to being a costume character. One is never take off your head in public. That's one. Number two is don't talk, right? So two rules broken already. And number three, with any job that's dealing with cash, you don't ca- count your cash on the spot. Like that, those are just three rules right off the bat that he's breaking. Um, I've been playing guitar for 20 something years. Started when I was 11. Um, I started, I started uh, street performing in Boston, in the subways in Boston around 2000, 2001. So I've been doing it for a while. Um, I've been playing out here in the wharf probably seven or eight years. It's what I do. That's very interesting though. Tell us the difference between the Boston street performer scene and the San Francisco street performer scene. Um, in the, in, the, in uh, Boston, it's actually, you know, they have, a, they have a program there. At Harvard Square, they have a program, a permitting program where Cambridge hands out permits and they are supportive of street performers. And as well as the, uh, the T, they call it the T, it's the, uh, the, the subway, it's called the T. And so we got permits and we played down there and you know we abide by the rules and things like that. I um, mean here in San Francisco we have now we do have a program like that. It got started about four or five years ago uh, here on the wharf where you we all co- coordinate and cooperate instead of fight over territory. Um, so we all meet once a month and have a meeting and divvy up the slots and, and that's how we do it. Now you're talking about people supporting street performers. Yes. Before we started rolling, John, you were yes. telling me that there's kind of a stigma or there was a stigma against street performers. Tell us about that. There is still there is still stigma against uh, street performers. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, like the fringes way to make a living. Um, a lot of people don't know that it's actually we work out here every day and we do do our best to make a living. Um, as, as you know, as the economy changes, as the music industry changes, it's actually becoming a more viable way for more musicians. And it's how a lot of got, a lot of musicians, professional musicians, even now who are in the industry, how they got discovered and how they practice in the first place. Now, I love John that you brought up Josh's. Cajon, he has a cajon. Cajon, I didn't know what it was called, but it looks like a speaker, but it sounds like a drum, but also other percussion. It could sound like other percussion. It yeah, it's called a cajon. It's essentially just a box. Uh, there's some snares, like you'd find on the bottom of a snare drum, that press up against that front plate, give it a kind of buzzy sound. Um, you hit it in the middle, and it pushes air out the back of the hole here, and it gives it a bass sound, and you hit up towards the top, you can get kind of a more snarey kind of pop sound, and as you move down towards the center of the drum, you get everything in between. So it kind of sounds like a drum set, kind of mixed with some other bongos, or, you know, some other kind of things. But it's all wood. Um, yeah, just it's an all acoustic instrument with yeah. a microphone in the back. What are you guys' plans for the future? I know you guys like right now performing, street performing. Yeah. But do you have um, kind of a, a dream or a vision or a goal of doing something else? Absolutely, world tour. World tour, world tour, not street performing world tour. Well, you know, it could be, it could be. I mean, I wouldn't mind that. But if it was on stage, I wouldn't mind that either. Of course not. You know, I mean, I. 
I want to see the world and I want to share the music that we play with with the world so that's awesome uh, you guys are doing a great job I know you guys have another set coming up here Josh John thanks for joining us right here on concrete talent best of luck to you guys Thank you awesome <laughs> boy I got to tell you something we learned a lot and we probably saw even more we're glad you joined us. I'm Raphael. This is Concrete Talent. We'll see you next time.